26,660 feet, the world's ninth highest mountain. Towering above northern Pakistan, Nanga Parbat begs to be conquered, yet it is one of the most dangerous mountains in the world, earning its name Killer Mountain. Though there was no chance I would climb it, I wanted to get as close as I could to this monstrous rock. The trek started with a jeep drive up the world's most dangerous road, then a gorgeous hike to Fairy Meadows where we camped for two nights, followed by an attempt to Nanga Parbat base camp, but the snow made the journey impossible for us. We had the most beautiful three hiking days amongst some of the world's highest mountains, and here's how it went. Alright guys, good morning. It's our second day here in Gilgit, and it's a beautiful, cloudless day. Perfect day for hiking. So. We're gonna head over to the bus station and head to Ferry Meadows where we'll take a Jeep up some crazy roads and start our hike up to Ferry Meadows and Nanga Parbat. And yeah, so we have about a three day expedition, hopefully making it to the base camp of Nanga Parbat. So yeah, let's uh, hope the weather stays like this because this is perfect for hiking. All right guys, we've just taken the taxi to the bus station here and we just have these beautiful views of Rakaposhi over the hills here. But we're actually gonna be heading in the other direction. We're gonna take one of these mini buses about, we still have about an hour to this bridge that'll take us over to the Jeeps that'll take us up to Ferry Meadows. So we'll jump in one of these mini buses soon and keep heading towards Ferry Meadows. just finished our hour and a half mini bus ride to this point where we're gonna get some Jeeps and then we're gonna head up the world's most dangerous road. So it should be a pretty intense ride making it up to our hiking spot for Ferry Meadows. But yeah, let's find a Jeep and start the trek. We're just negotiating which Jeep we're gonna take, how much it's gonna be, and it's gonna be about 14,000 rupees to take us up, and I have no idea how far it's gonna be, but I know it's gonna be a crazy road, steep drop-offs, so it's gonna be a pretty scary, wild ride, but we're gonna jump in the Jeep soon and start heading up the mountain. All right, so we had to come to this little police stop because you have to register your passport and visa. And our driver was just tweaking the vehicle a little bit, tightening the wheels, pouring some water on the engine to cool it down a little bit. So hopefully we're all good to go. We've only gone like 15 or 20 minutes up so far, but look at how steep this is. And then hopefully there's no problem with the car, but he's asking for some water to cool down the engine. So we'll see, but this road has just been so crazy, so bumpy, um, but beautiful views looking out here. We good? Good? Okay. <laughs> All right, we got the thumbs up. So hopefully that means we're good to jump back in the Jeep here, but we're gonna keep going up and yeah, just this cliff is just like, we have, so far we've had like a couple feet of clearance, so it's not so scary, but I think there's gonna be some parts where we're like right on the edge here, which is crazy. So let's jump back in the car. So we have to find a place. 
We just survived one of the world's most dangerous roads up here to Fairy Meadows and it was so bumpy and again we just had such steep drop-offs but then eventually we got these beautiful views of Nanga Parbat and drove through these little villages and it was a really beautiful drive, just very bumpy. So we have about a four mile hike up to the Fairy Meadows where we'll be camping for the night so let's start. Right when you get off the jeeps here, you hike over this little suspension bridge, then there's a little hotel restaurant where you could stop to get some food or tea, but I think we're just anxious to start hiking. It's about 12.30 now, and again, we'll have about a four mile hike. We're at 8,500 feet, and we're gonna hike up to 10,000 feet today to the Fairy Meadows. So, should take just about two hours. zigzagged for about 10 or 15 minutes up this hill and then all of a sudden we got this beautiful view of Naga Prabat and it's just like completely framed by these beautiful pine trees and it's interesting because so much of these mountains just have no vegetation but it looks like the higher we get up in elevation we're starting to get a little bit more pine trees a little bit more vegetation but absolutely no shade along this trail but it looks like we'll just be hiking and According to the map, we're just hiking straight towards that massive peak right there for a while. So it's gonna be a beautiful hike, cloudless sky day. And yeah, it's gonna be a beautiful day for a hike to the world's ninth highest mountain. We've just been hiking the last three miles just straight towards Nanga Parbat and we have this one little switchback and we're hiking through this nice pine forest which is giving us a little bit of shade, some lovely scent and we have about three tenths of a mile to the campsite. So we'll be hiking this way the rest of the time because there's only the, just this one switchback and we just still have some beautiful views looking out over the river valley that we just came from. And yeah, should be to camp within 15 or 20 minutes. I have just come a little ways up this switchback towards camp and we turned back and got the most incredible view of Nanga Prabha so far. And you can see the glacier that's leading up to it and we're, we're looking at just like a wall of mountain and the highest point is 26,660 feet. just about 2.30 and it took us two hours to get up to Fairy Meadows here and it's like a whole village. There's all of these cabins and campsites and you're just surrounded by beautiful snow-capped peaks and we're up at about 10,000 feet so the oxygen is definitely pretty thin but there's so many cottages up here it's amazing and they're just building more and more so it's going to be a beautiful afternoon evening just hanging out up here in the meadows and just looking at all of the mountains that surround us here it's beautiful and it's so nice we still have about four hours until the sun sets on the mountains up here so we have a lot of time to just rest relax and enjoy these mountain views which will be really nice before hitting nanga parbat base camp tomorrow so 
yeah, we're gonna find a restaurant, a little cafe, get something to eat and drink and just chill. So yeah, this place is beautiful. We've just secured a little cabin here and all five of us will sleep in there. We'll get some little mattresses on the floor. We have a little wood stove burner to keep the room warm. And yeah, just these beautiful views out here in our front yard. So let's uh, head to the cafe and see what we can get for lunch and tea. And again, we'll just get to chill here for a couple hours this afternoon and watch a beautiful sunset over the mountains. We've just been hanging out at camp. We've had some tea, we've had some soup, but we're getting the last little light on the tips of these peaks. And as soon as the sun went down over the mountains over here, it's gotten really cold. So it's gonna be a pretty cold night, but beautiful just light on the tops of these mountain peaks here. And can't wait to get even closer tomorrow. I did hear that base camp is like still covered in snow, so we probably won't make it all the way to base camp but we'll make it up to, there's like another campsite that you can get to, and then a couple of viewpoints that'll get us up closer to the mountains. So yeah, looking forward to waking up tomorrow morning, hopefully seeing a nice sunrise on these mountains here, and then yeah, doing a little bit more of a hike. So gonna just enjoy the cabin, being up here in the mountains tonight. Maybe there'll be a fire and everything, and then we'll see you guys in the morning when we continue our hike up to Nanga Prabat. So yeah, we'll see you then. It's 6 a.m. here at Fairy Meadows, and I had to pull myself from the warmth of our little cabin to check out the sunrise here. And the first light is just hitting the top of these peaks, and just look at how beautiful this mountain is with the morning light on it. It is just another, like, perfect cloudless day. We have this beautiful blue sky and the sun coming up over this ridge and just illuminating Nanga Parbat. I'm very excited to just have like a perfect mountain day and yeah probably gonna just enjoy sunrise here at camp a little bit because it's just so beautiful being surrounded by the mountains and eventually we'll head closer to the mountain to get some better views but yeah beautiful morning so happy. So it's just about seven. So I was just hanging out watching the sunrise on the peaks for about an hour there at camp. But I kind of want to get going and start this hike while we still have, it looks like the eastern light is going to hit the glaciers the best for some of the views. So yeah, going to start early here and it's still freezing cold, but once the sun kind of hits the valley, it'll warm up a little bit. But it's about a five or six mile hike all the way to base camp. But again, I heard reports yesterday that base camp is still pretty snowed in. So I'm just gonna see how far and how close to the mountain I can get this morning. So and it looks like, again, base camp is just gonna be, it's just gonna be a direct hike straight towards the mountain. So we'll just be looking at this beautiful peak the whole way. So yeah, and just like another perfect hiking day. No clouds, just beautiful weather. So yeah, let's uh, hike and see what we find along the way. So let's go. Just about 10, 15 minutes from camp, we're just hiking along the edge of this cliff here and then you're just off looking at the mountains in front of us 
and it's beautiful. And then we have this pine forest to the right, glacier to the left, and river valley, and then just this beautiful view in front of us. So, really beautiful hike. And the sun, you can just see, is just starting to peak over that ridge right there. hike through the woods here and we're starting to hike through the snow and we're just on this like snow covered river with just the beautiful snow capped peaks in the distance as we're hiking towards it. The snow is hard enough and there's enough of a trail through the snow that it's not too bad hiking through it's like nice and packed down so yeah beautiful let's keep going. just about 8.30, so I've been hiking for about an hour and a half, and I've come two and a half miles up to Bay Hall Camp here, and there's a couple of these little cabins, just very quaint looking, but then you just have this epic wall of mountain and snow and rock right behind me, and yeah, it is just a beautiful, gorgeous morning, and then you can look back down the valley to see Rakaposhi and some of the other high peaks of Pakistan that way but this is just a beautiful view this morning and it's it's been so nice to just like not be in any rush and just kind of take my time hiking through the woods and just beautiful views the whole time and yeah this is gorgeous so I'm gonna keep hiking through to the other side of Bayhawk camp and then just enjoy some of these views of the mountains so let's go All right guys, this Bayhal camp is actually massive. There's so many little cabins. I can imagine staying here and just having these beautiful views. Like this is one of the best views and we're so close to the mountain here. And so we're at 11,600 feet and I think I've come just about to the edge of Bayhal camp. So they say from here, the snow gets thicker and a lot more dense and the hike gets more difficult. Again, I don't know if I'll make it to base camp. It's another like two and a half miles but I'll probably keep trudging on, but I just wanna chill here and have some breakfast, have some water, fly the drone, get some nice aerials of this place. But yeah, this is just a beautiful spot up here. And so unexpected in Pakistan, I did not expect this. It's just such beautiful, epic mountains. So yeah, let's uh, fly the drone, have some snacks, and then we'll keep heading up to base camp. over this ridge right here and I was able to get some beautiful shots of the glacier that's just on the other side of this ridge. And that was amazing. And then flying like right over some of these like foothills here. And yeah, it was amazing. Some amazing shots. So I'm gonna start hiking towards base camp. So I'm gonna start hiking this way towards the mountain still. And yeah, we'll see how long conditions are hikeable. I mean, honestly, these are the views that I want, so I really don't need to go too much further, but let's uh, keep exploring and see how far we can get.
guys, I was warned not to go past Rehal Camp and now I kind of understand why. I've gone like about a mile past the camp and it's just been like knee deep snow. You're just trudging through and if you're not in the ruts and you're just trying to like walk on the snow, you'll fall through and I've like fallen through to my knees a couple times so it's just really hurt and it's really dangerous because if there's rocks under it, it could like really mess up your leg. So. I think this might be about as far as I'll make it, but these views are so epic, like I can't complain at all. And the problem with the snow is the later in the day, the more the sun comes out, the more slushy the snow will be, which means the more you'll fall through and you'll slip and everything. So it's probably prudent to head back to at least Ray Hall camp um, because this is just kind of crazy up here. And it's just like, it's a boulder field so you could be slipping through and falling into rocks and you don't know what's good snow and what's just a thin layer of ice. But I guess that's what I get for coming in mid-April. But yeah, it's amazing. I'm sitting here at 12,000 feet looking up at 26,000 feet. So I'm not even halfway to the top of this mountain here. So it's just, it's hard to show in photos, but it's just like a massive, massive rock. And the ninth tallest mountain in the world and yeah it's just beautiful did not expect this kind of mountain beauty here in Pakistan I'll probably just kind of take my time heading back to the camp that we're staying at and just enjoy that for the afternoon it's just such a beautiful peaceful place to hang out let's head back and try to not fall through the snow and yeah we'll see you guys probably at camp All right guys, I'm just about half a mile back from camp and I'm along that ridge where we had beautiful views looking towards Nanga Parbat this morning, but this time we're looking out over the valley here and seeing some of those other amazing peaks off in Pakistan. So just a beautiful walk along this ridge. It is just afternoon and I'm just arriving back at our Fairy Meadows base camp here. And yeah, that was such an epic hike. And it was about, yeah, five hours. So about two hours there, about an hour relaxing up there and then two hours back. And now I have just the rest of the afternoon to just sit up here in these meadows and then just enjoy these beautiful snow-capped mountains that just surround us here at camp. It's amazing how long I can just stare at these massive glaciers on this mountain. And then tomorrow morning we'll hike back down, get the jeeps down to the road, and then head back to Gilgit. So yeah, I'm just gonna chill a little bit and I'll see you guys later. Good morning guys, it's our third and final day of the Fairy Meadows hike and again we've done most of the trekking already so we just have to hike like two hours back down to the Jeep and then take the Jeep down that crazy scary road. It's just another beautiful morning here, completely cloudless sky, gorgeous views and it's been so nice just hanging out here. We had a leisurely morning, some breakfast and was able to just like hang out up here for a couple hours before heading down but it's almost 11 and our jeep's picking us up at 1 so we're gonna start our hike here pretty soon and yeah it should be less than two hours to make it back down to the jeeps so yeah let's start hiking
just about 1 p.m. so just about a two-hour hike down pretty easy pretty scenic so we are just about back at the Jeeps here and so we're gonna load up and then we still have a two-hour bumpy Jeep ride all the way back down to town and then a taxi to Gilgit and yeah it'll be beautiful but I'm more scared to go down because hopefully the brakes work going down this hill so we'll see but let's uh, jump in the truck here and head down Here's our driver. All right, we're gonna take it slow. Are the brakes working? Okay. Are the brakes working? You think so? Okay. Are you a good driver? G. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That wasn't a lot of confidence, but here's our driver that drove us up here, and this is the Jeep that's gonna take us back down. So, hoping everything works well. <laughs> about halfway down but this has been a lot scarier going down than it was coming up we're just flying around these corners and then just seeing the road here we still have so much more to go the steep drop-offs and then seeing how the road is built just on these piles of rocks is actually quite scary so anyways back in the Jeep and we're gonna keep going down All right guys, we have just reached flat ground and it feels so good to be out of the bumpy Jeep and like those cliffs were so scary. And we can now say that we've survived the world's most dangerous road twice going up and down. And going down was definitely a lot scarier. He was just taking the turns so fast and then we actually saw the tread on his tires are like completely gone. So it was pretty scary. But anyways, we still have about an hour and a half bus ride all the way back to Gilgit. But that's about it for Fairy Meadows and Nanga Prabhat. Um, we're going to be heading up into the Hunza Valley the next couple days, doing a lot more of the mountains and some of the beautiful peaks around here and little Pakistani villages up in the north of Pakistan. But that's it for this one, so we'll see you guys next time.